This time on Building the X Set, it's time to install the Craig Shack. my 1.8 crankshaft uh, at the machine shop well before I took it to the machine shop the crankshaft was in uh, very good condition uh, the you know all the journals were in in uh, nice shape except for one had a slight nick where a piece of debris had gotten in the machinist uh, said in his <clears throat> experience that uh, debris was something that was stuck in the uh, crankshaft oil port here um, and basically probably during assembly that that was in there and then once pressure hit the system it shot out and it m lightly marred a bearing not enough in his opinion to need to replace the bearings as all the clearances on the bearings were in very good shape on the stock bearings this was a not a low mileage motor but I think it was around 100,000 miles on it um, as I recall uh, maybe a little bit more, 100 to 110,000 miles. And so his recommendation was just keep the bearings in place as this is not a motor that I plan on um, uh, basically keeping a long time. I'm really just kind of reassembling this motor, cleaning it up just to understand how the engine assembly process works and kind of get as much information as I can without spending a lot of money um, on forged internals. So uh, this motor is hopefully just going to hold me out um, in a low boost application for a couple few years and then I will be going to a fully built uh, bottom end and head uh, eventually down the road. So I did have the crank polish because of that uh, slight marring. It did not need grinding. Everything was still in spec. So I had this uh, hot tank, or not hot tanked, but uh, cleaned in the part washer at the machine shop and then the machinist did polish the crank. Uh, the one thing that he did say is just like the block, you must deep clean this afterwards. The hot tank mainly just gets the grease and oil and everything and really the hot uh, the, the parts washing really that he does is just designed basically to not um, necessarily clean the crank up for assembly but to clean it up for machining. So after it's been machined there still may be metal and and fragments from the actual machining process stuck in the in the oil ports or oil galleys whatever you want to call these in the crankshaft um, so next step was basically I went outside and much like I did with the engine block I basically did a paint thinner solvent bath <clears throat> with my solvent gun and then rinsed with hot water then after that uh, went ahead and um, did a super clean bath on it, focusing a lot on, on the, the oil galleries here and oil ports in the in the crankshaft itself, getting those all cleaned out and then once again rinsing with hot water. So now basically the crankshaft is back, completely cleaned out. All the uh, ports, every surface of it has been completely cleaned, dried off, and is, is ready for installation. The one thing I am going to do right before I drop it in the engine is I am going to be taking once again the uh, Marvel Mystery Oil and doing a cleaning slash final wipe down of everything here on the crank, uh, including all the, the journal surfaces and machine surfaces, uh, basically to get rid of any foreign material before actually inserting it into the engine. Now I am going through and I am clearancing all my bearings using uh, plastic gauge. Um, here it's, you know, just six bucks or so at AutoZone or Napa, wherever you want to uh, wherever you like shopping at. Uh, just basically going to do that dry first, um, just to double check all my, all my clearances are still within spec. They should be, there should be no issue with that, but I just want to double check um, as these really are kind of the, the core part of the engine. So I'm not going to do a video on the actual clearancing and, and me checking those specs because there's plenty of those online. You don't need to see me do it over again. But um, if you want to, there's several good videos done on using plastic gauge on YouTube to check bearing, uh, main bearing clearances. So next step is um, you're going to see me um, cleaning the uh, machine surfaces for the bearings in the bottom end of the motor and basically inserting the crank and uh, getting the caps on and bearings on. Okay, so now I'm, I've clearanced all my bearings. They are um, just at the top end of spec. For, so uh, for a 
100 and way below the maximum, I should say, that spec allows for. So for just around 100,000 miles, um, every single bearing was clearanced on the crank within two ten thousandths of an inch, uh, which is quite surprising to me. I thought it was going to be a little, uh, little odder readings than that, but I'm basically just going to uh, wipe down these areas that the uh, main bearings sit in on the block with some lacquer thing. final blow off with air. I have um, what I would say meticulously cleaned my crankshaft again, got rid of all the plastic gauge markings off of there, uh, wiped it all down again with lacquer thinner and blown it off a couple times. I'm going to go ahead and blow it off one more time before I insert the actual crankshaft into the assembly here. Um, the next step is to install your main bearings. Uh, this is a main bearing here. Uh, the bottom, the blocks, or I guess it would be the top kind of, but the block side of the bearing, I should say. And you'll see a an, an, uh, port for an oil uh, galley, which will coincide with the port in the block. There's also a little tab here, and those lock in here. There's only one direction these can go in, and these can only go on one side of the crankshaft. It's pretty obvious because of the hole. The other side of the bearing does not have that hole. So. What I'm going to do first off here, i got to find my screwdriver so I can open my lacquer thinner up, is I'm going to be taking lacquer thinner and basically going through my bearing here and just wiping it off one last time to ensure there's no residues or oils or dirts or anything like that on the bearing. And visually, once it looks very clean, I will just quickly blow it off with the compressor. Now these, when they seat into the block, and these go in specifically, they have been clearanced in one spot each bearing, so they must be reassembled in that area. Um, next, what I will be doing is basically inserting the bearing. There is no lubrication uh, required and it'll just snap in there. You want to make sure that you feel flush on, on both these ends here, but there's no um, uh, lubrication required between the block machine surface and the outside of that bearing, as you don't want really want any lubrication there because you want these to stay put in this area. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go ahead and put the other four in, and then we will get to installing the crankshaft. Now, before installing the crankshaft, there's one last thing you need to do after your uh, main bearings are installed. <clears throat> or at least the first half then, thrust bearings. These go on either side of the number four cap area, like so. And what these will do is these will actually uh, stop the, or limit the crankshaft's play forward and back in the motor. So when there's thrust applied to the, to the engine, the crankshaft will want to move one direction. When that thrust is unapplied, it will want to move back to the other direction. These limit that play so there's not damage and the, end, the crankshaft doesn't have too much um, forward to back movement. So basically installing these, put some, uh, I've been using Permatex Ultra Slick assembly lube onto the surface of these as they, will, they need to be oiled and uh, you need to have assembly lube in there for lubrication on the first startup. Okay, and one bearing is all lubed up and installed. Step before installation of the crankshaft <clears throat> is applying engine, or excuse me, assembly lube to your bearings. The assembly lube basically is the lubricant for your motor before it sees oil on startup. So this will allow the motor to have lubricancy and the bearings all to be lubricant, lubricated excuse me, before the initial oil flow into the engine. So basically going to apply a generous amount to the top side of all of these bearings before installing the crankshaft and then we will be doing the same to the other bearings before applying 
the caps to the crankshaft. The lube has been applied to all the bearing surfaces. I have also applied it to the crankshaft itself. It is now time to install a crankshaft very carefully into the bearings. There we go. Now, in my previous attempt, I had tested that the crankshaft rotated. That basically allowed all the bearings to slide out. So do not rotate your crankshaft at this point as your bearings may turn out if you rotate it a certain direction as the tabs will not lock in. So now it is time to assemble basically our caps here. And as you can see, that's the plastic gauge in the bearing surface there. This is my worst bearing. I do have some scoring in there. Um, but uh, basically, we want to clean all that plastic gauge off prep these uh, bearings, sorry, let me get in front of the camera, prep these bearings and this, um, and clean it off and apply assembly lube to the inside of the bearing surface before we apply the cap on top of the crankshaft. Well, this is my number one cap, all cleaned, blow dried off with air. Then I will insert that tab in and then simply snap the bearing down into the cap. Once again, making sure both surfaces are flush. Now these caps have a forward mark that is pointing toward the front of the engine, and that is where you want to place the direction of the cap. So real quick, gonna apply some assembly lube uh, to this cap, and then install it on the crankshaft. One thing you want to do before starting to install your caps is you wanna take your fuel gauge and you need to check your thrust bearing clearances. Uh, mine was um, five thousandths, which uh, according to my factory service manual is well within spec, but um, basically you want to slide the crankshaft one way or the other and then be able to check that clearance between the end of the crankshaft and the thrust bearing with a feeler gauge. Time to install the first main cap. I'm starting up front with the number one cap. There is an arrow in the front that dictates the direction of the cap supposed to be installed that is toward the front of the engine. Uh, bearing is installed and then assembly lube applied to the bearing surface. Then basically you just want to gently set the cap down, seat it into place, and then take a mallet and when you hear a click that means your bearing, it, your cap is installed. Okay. Now basically doing that four more times all the way back and then it is time to start torquing down the crankshaft. Okay, so now all four, oh, excuse me, all five caps have been installed on the crankshaft and uh, basically ready to torque everything down. So um, I have already dipped the ends of my bolts in motor oil and so they are ready to be inserted. Basically I don't know why but I've been recommended um, Online, I've seen the recommendation to dip your bolts in, your bolt threads, I should say, in motor oil because it will <coughs> supposedly help with the torquing process. It gives a more accurate reading. I don't know how that works. I don't know if that's true, but that is what I did here. Now there is a torque sequence to torquing the caps down. <clears throat> Basically, that consists of, um, off the top of my head, don't quote me on this, but um, you're looking at around a 23 foot-pound initial torque, and then I believe it is a 41 to 44, something like that torque. I gotta read up on that before I do it. Um, and then the pattern basically goes uh, something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, something like that in that order. Be sure to refer to your factory service manual and you will see me doing it in the correct pattern here in the video in just a minute. So uh, one thing I've noticed, uh, you really do have to check with your caps how they're aligned, that the bolts go in and will actually thread into the hole properly. If they feel tough or, or not like they're fitting quite right, you may need to slightly adjust that cap with a couple taps of the hammer because it may not be quite aligned perfectly on the uh, on the bolt hole. So for example, this one here turns in freely, 
This one here gets a little jammed, so it might need to be bumped a little bit with the hammer, sometimes just pulling it back out, cleaning it out, checking the hole, and then inserting again, and it threads in good. So um, anyways, be sure to check that before you go to start torquing your bolts down. So looking through here, this is the recommended Mazda tightening sequence. It goes basically like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten for tightening your crank bolts. So now we are ready to torque down our uh, main cap bolts. And so basically, first step I'm going to do is at 22 foot-pounds. Right now they are just hand tight. Now to jump up for the second tightening, it is jumping up to 40 to 43 foot-pounds. I'm going to stick with 42. Okay, all torqued down. So now after it's uh, torqued down, then the final thing basically will just be to quickly check to make sure that the crank turns freely and that uh, there's no impingements or anything like that on the crankshaft. So everything seems to be really good right now. And uh, next step is basically off to um, installing the rods and pistons, the rotating assembly, onto the crank. And for that I will be flipping the motor back around to the top side to uh, start doing that. So that's all I got for this video. Just want to do a quick one on a basic crank installation. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I appreciate it. Until next time, thanks guys.